So with it being such a beautiful day today, couldn't uh, ask for a better day. Lovely, it feels like spring already, 15 degrees. Thought I'd uh, pull the RS out and take it for this maiden test drive. So since the cans been fitted, I haven't had time to take it out. So I'm gonna, gonna let it warm up for a sec. Take it out for a little drive. See how, um, see how much better it drives now. It's got a proper camshaft in it. So that's a lovely day, so I thought I'd show you um, much more aggression in this cam. We've done a little bit of private road here, so don't have to worry about it too much. Also, I'm going to set up a tripod and quickly get a drive by. So, just listen to the engine now. Um, some back off the RS you can see here just split the gasket these were all talked up to spec it was only eight Newton meters or six pounds foot or whatever it was um, and they've just split I don't know this is a Burton's gasket I don't know if these are any good so I've got a Victor Ryan's one and a Payen one now um, as I always said to you you have to uh, pop three or four gaskets on before you even get one to seal they're just a bad design so, so seeing as Victor Ryan's are my go-to gasket makers for any of the high power engines I ever build, I thought I'm going to try one of these um, on the CVH as well. So I've just pulled this one out and I've had a feel of both of them and the difference is uh, a lot. So this is super, super supple. If you, I mean, you can't feel it, but really, really flexible, really supple, whereas this is brittle. I mean, you can just see when I'm trying to bend it how much more brittle it is. So um, with the Victor Ryan's one, you can literally see really, really supple. So I'm hoping that's the reason that this is um, cracked because there's no heat been into it. It's literally cracked when it's torqued down. So it looks like this gasket is going to be a ton more supple. I've got a pay-in one as well, so I'm going to compare the two. But I'm going to stick this one on because I love Victor Ryan's. Any of their stuff's high quality. Right, so let's have another go. So I've just uh, freshly cleaned and degreased the sump again. Had to drop the oil out, obviously. Cleaned up all the mating surfaces. Um, brake cleaned it all, so it's absolutely spotless full of uh, grease. These rubber gaskets, you can't get them oily as they move. So let's have another go, try and get this on and uh, leak free. So I've resulted to going to the old school method. Um, little tricks that we used back in the day when we was doing these cars. So uh, we can get these gasket to line up with no sealant at all because it just makes it slimy and slips off. Stud the whole block all the way round. It's a sure way of being able to get it on. Line it all up properly because you normally have to stick it to the block and then you have to use sealant, adhesive, whatever. I don't want to use that. So I'm going to put it on the sump. We'll be able to line it all up properly. All you've got to worry about is around the crank, around the oil pump. Um, once you sort that out, uh, with your fingers it should seal properly so let's give it a go so using this method allows you to put the gasket up onto the block without any sort of sealant it holds it up and you can also then put it into this channel um, you can see around the crank rear main and also around the pulley there and uh, then you can just put a sump up onto the studs it just takes a lot longer because you've obviously got to put all the studs out and everything but I'd rather take a little bit longer than have to pull this off again. So first drive since the um, gasket's been sorted out and turned the boost up a little bit just to get the AFRs a little bit better. That was a bit rich on boost, but that cam has made a huge difference. No more misfire now. Car pulls all the way to the limiter. It chokes a little bit top end. I think it's down to the exhaust housing, so we're going to change that over, but we've got the new turbo to go on anyway. So there's no point putting that exhaust housing on that turbo. We're just going to put the T34 straight on, but she pulls hard now. She's only running... Uh, low boost. There you go, just starting her up. Freezing cold night, so a lot of condensation about. You see, it's really foggy, but great for air charge temperatures. So, uh, exhaust sounds perfect now. Idle's all set, fueling set. Uh, this is how the car should have sounded. 
very difficult to diagnose things like um, cam issues, especially when the car drives idles and uh, does, it, does it just seems like it's a spark issue. But now we've got to the bottom of it, for a solid lifter engine, you can hear how quiet it is. You're gonna have a usual rattle from the rocker arm, so you can't help that. So we've brung the RS down here to South End. It's the home of the RS turbos. Probably why they wanted so much, the seafront. You can see it's a bit quiet tonight because it is February, it's pretty cold still. It was really busy in the daytime, but it's getting late now. So yeah, we thought we'd take the drive down here. So tonight we've just been testing our AFRs. It's a lovely cold night. Uh, turn up the boost a little bit, run about 12 PSI now just to sort the AFRs out. You can see just finished it off earlier with the unknown performance sticker. Carnies are clean, you can see it's dirty when you look up close, but it's here as nice it sounds on idle. Hasn't missed a beat all night. And now we've got no sump leaks, no oil leaks from that sump, so that's sorted out. We didn't have to use any sealant, so the studding of the block the old school way, that sorted it right out. So we're gonna give it a wash tomorrow because it's a bit um, dirty now. So we just went and played a couple of games of pool, so we just come out, warming up the car now, we're gonna take it back home. But we've got to give it a bit of chatter down the strip first. There's a few full boys behind us there, appreciate it. It's all kicking off at South End. Puma gear linkage today and um, we thought we'd show you how it's done because after saying that we had a Puma linkage on it in the last video or a few videos ago a lot of people commenting how to do it so we're just going to give you a quick guide of how to do it so this is the Puma gear linkage the throw on this is 50% less than the Escort so we're going to show you how this bolts to the floor pan um, the brackets you need to use and how to um, mod it to get it to fit so you can see visually that there's a bit of difference you've got this mounting bracket on the escort and you've got this rear mounting bracket on the puma um, you're gonna have to drill out the extra two holes for this mounting bracket obviously we've already cleaned this section up already wire brushed it got all the rust and that off it uh, we're just gonna give that a lick of paint now so I'll just give this a little bit of paint just for a bit of protection because uh, we all know they like to rust so you can see that on these Puma, they have a mounting bracket at the back. So none of the strain is on this. So you can just literally take this one off your Escort one. You can see it just slides off. And all this does is stops the side to side movement now. And all the support and all the weight is taken up by this. You can see that we've trimmed the bracket already. It needs a little bit more trimming. We're going to show you how to drill the holes into the um, shell of the car. So you can see we've already um, elongated the holes in the shell it's because the linkage and the Puma you can see sits in a different position. We've also got to drill the holes out and elongate this spacer plate so it's got a bit of free movement in it. Right, so you can see more from underneath. As I say, this ain't like a guide. It's just to help you out on the people that wanted to know how to do it. You want to make sure that the gear linkage is parallel so it's not sitting at an awkward angle because it'll put a strain on it. So what we've done, you can see we've put in spacers down the back these ones are 25 mil um we've also shortened down this bracket so it fits in the tunnel and then we've drilled holes obviously through the shell into the inside put some locking nuts on there um that plate really doesn't do much now other than stop side to side movement and this is what takes all the strain so you've got a nice modern gear linkage on there and it, it absolutely feels amazing it's 50 percent shorter than the standard escort one Right, so you can see from the top now, just two little bolt holes, they hold up that mount and you can barely even see them. Just put the gator on, all fits factory, just like the Escort one does. And the throw is so much shorter than the, the, the Escort one. And um, we've put a gear stick extension on there, just a skunk 2-1. And then we've put on the uh, Puma gear knob as well, just to uh, finish it off. But you can see how much tire it looks and it, and it looks like an Escort one now. So... That's a nice little mod to do. So I'm jacking the car up on the rear because I want to address a few issues. I've got um, some bushes. Nothing's really that warm, but uh, might as well replace them anyway because they ain't got bushes on the back yet. So we've got some tire wood bushes, got some anti-roll bar bushes. Going to get some wishbone bushes as well. I ain't got them at the minute. So I'm going to get these wheels off. And uh, we're going to replace them now. Um, going to tidy up anything on the rear end. The exhaust is a bit low because it's scraping over speed dumps, but it's hard to get them to line up because there's a wishbone there. But we're going to try and get that up as high as we can, but it don't knock on the wishbone. So just got one of the arms off. Tough old job because uh, everything was seized on, but 
uh, lubed it right up, got it off. The bushes themselves actually ain't that bad. They ain't um, corroded or anything. I don't know if these are. Yeah, they're actually the Ford ones. I don't know if they're, they're from new or whatnot. But nice set of polys. are going to stiffen it up a little bit better. Going to give this uh, thread a clean up. Um, get any of the rust and surface rust that's off it. Get these nice poly bushes on there. That rear bush was a little bit tougher to get off. Definitely an original part. Um, pretty much rusted on. You can see it's got the full badge on it. There's no way people are going to go out and buy a genuine full rubber unless it's 95. Um, it's got this sleeve on there as well. I'm just splitting that open now. Uh, and I'll be able to pull that off. And then it's got this uh, washer collar that's seized on there as well. So once I've got all that off, clean this up. Be good as new. So I just went over the arm with um, the wire knot wheel, got all the corrosion and the cr rust off the, the, the thread, so the thread will last and fresh again. Um, went over it with copper grease as well, um, smothered loads of copper grease on there so it's nice and lubed up. You've got fresh new washer on there, um, bush is a lot better than the rubber ones that were on there, so much firmer. Stainless sleeve in there as well, so let's get this back on. So just like the arm on the anti-roll bar on the front that we changed the bushes on, this washer is you see it's dished. Don't be tempted to, to face it inwards towards the bush like that. You want it to face outwards. Otherwise it's just gonna cut into the bush and uh, start splitting. So if you have any sort of performance car, or even um, a car with some sort of mileage on it, the main difference between a, a, a car that's done no mileage and a car that's done even 40,000 miles, they take so much abuse, these bushes, that they just become softer and softer and softer till they start splitting and foul. But don't even let them get to that stage. If you've got a performance car, change all your bushes for polyurethane. They just don't break down. Um, your car's always gonna be tight, don't matter how many miles you do on it. Right, so they're all done. Uh, I've done both sides. Uh, I've got some other bushes as well that I wanna change. Got any roll bar bushes, wishbone bushes. But now that I've had the car up in the air, you can see it's a little bit crusty on the wishbones and uh, it's not like um, structural, it's just surface and my OCD kicks in. So I'm gonna pull off all them wishbones, all the anti-roll bars, do it all properly. Um, really hate these rear drums. I wanna do a rear disc conversion, but it's just um, from my experience before of having drums and discs, they're so tow at me when you've got discs on the back, it just, uh, it's a bit worrying. I wanna change these drop links as well on the anti-roll bars. So I'm gonna just t tear it all apart and do it all in one go at the minute. Just change these over. And that tighten it up a little bit. 